For the ancient Greeks, massage was an essential part of athletic competition. An individual known as an anointer would rub olive oil on an athlete before an athletic event. The oil and massage was believed to boost athletic performance, protect the athlete from the sun, as well as give the athlete's body an appealing aesthetic. A massage wasn't only performed prior to an athletic event. A scraping tool would be used by the athletes themselves to remove sweat, dirt, and oil, which would then be collected and even sold for medicinal purposes. From there, the anointer would again massage the athletes with olive oil to help relieve the fatigued body. Hippocrates, the father of medicine himself, believed massage to be highly beneficial for the body, especially as a therapeutic tool. And today, you'll find athletic trainers, massage therapists, physiotherapists, and other training staff using similar techniques to the ancient Greeks. Although, probably with a lot less olive oil. These days, it's called sports massage, and it can be performed both prior to and after the athletic performance, as well as part of a rehabilitative and maintenance regimen for the athlete. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at the specific sports massage techniques being used on professional athletes all over the world, and we'll discuss how much they can realistically expect in regards to boosting their performance. And on top of that, we'll also take a look at the various sports massage techniques that might help your average runner, weightlifter, and even CrossFitter. It's gonna be a um, oily one. Let's do this. Real quick, I wanna thank the sponsor of today's video, AG1. I love AG1. I've been taking it for years now and I can't imagine my morning routine without it. AG1 is foundational nutrition. It's made up of 75 high quality whole food sourced ingredients, including vitamins, minerals, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens. AG1 is NSF certified for sport, which is the gold standard when it comes to clean ingredient nutrition. AG1 comes with ingredients such as alpha lipoic acid and coenzyme Q10, which helps support athletic performance as well as reduce fatigue. And it's ridiculously easy to make. All you do is take one scoop, add it to eight ounces of water, shake vigorously, take a sip, and then carry on with your day. Look, I'm the type of guy that is all about effortless daily habits, so knowing that a significant amount of my essential daily nutrition has been taken care of first thing in the morning is a huge weight off my shoulders. If you're interested, go to drinkag1.com slash humananatomy and they'll give our audience a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D3 plus K2 and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go ahead and find that link in the description below. Generally speaking, there are five basic techniques in massage. Now, this is all of massage, not just sports massage. And the first is called effleurage. This is a gliding movement. It's for lengthening tissue, applying lotion, oils, but it also can help increase blood flow. You then have petrissage. And petrissage is a kneading movement. This is what most people think of when they think massage. And this is also going to increase blood flow but it also can lift the tissues like and help separate them from one another. And it's thought to possibly help with metabolic waste removal deeper down in the tissues. Depotment is a rhythmic striking and this will actually cause the muscles underneath to contract. So as I'm slapping my arm here, my muscles are just like jolting underneath it. Now, when done kind of like intensely, it's very stimulative, right? You kind of do this in it wakes up the muscles. But if you do it really lightly and consistently, it actually can be somewhat sedative to the underlying tissue. Friction can be gliding or non-gliding. If it's gliding, this is obviously going to increase the temperature of the tissues and this is gonna make it more pliable, promotes relaxation. But if you're doing non-gliding friction, this is typically used for what manual therapists would say to help break up adhesions, right? You're targeting a very specific area and you are trying to break up any tension underneath. Vibration, on the other hand, this is kind of similar to topotement, but unlike topotement where the hand is actually coming away from the body, vibration, it never really leaves. But like topotement, this can also be stimulative if done really quickly, like, right, you're kind of, stimulating the muscle tissue, or it can actually be sedative because that consistent rhythmic pressure kind of lulls the nervous system into just, I don't wanna say falling asleep, but definitely relaxing. Which you're probably then wondering, what about massage guns, right? A massage gun is essentially a powered vibration tool. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I thought about how to say that without it sounding inappropriate, but even saying like powered vibration tool sounds terrible, but regardless, that's exactly what it's doing, right? The, the massage gun is attempting 
to quiet the nervous system, so to speak, right? To get that nervous system to just not be sending as much tonifying signals and causing the underlying muscle tissue to just relax. These five techniques are found in Swedish, deep tissue, and sports massage modalities, and many others beyond those. The difference in these massage modalities then comes down to the application of those techniques and the overall goal associated with them. With sports massage, the techniques are primarily geared for three desired outcomes, a positive benefit to performance, quicker recovery, and injury prevention. Now that's a bit of an oversimplification. There is more nuance to it, but at the same time, I still think that's pretty fair. Typically you'll hear things like pre-event, post-event, maintenance, and rehabilitation massage. These are different application methods for the techniques we discussed, and they correspond to different periods surrounding an athlete's performance. So for instance, pre-event massage is really only performed immediately before an event, while maintenance massage is performed between events and even between seasons. Pre-event massage is typically more stimulative and it's meant to increase blood flow throughout the body as well as warm up joints and muscle tissue. So you'll typically see a lot of like gliding friction to potent, you know, more stimulative movements, but you'll also typically see a lot of joint mobilization. And this is just meant again to help warm up those joints. Post-event massage is far less stimulating. And this is where you use a combination of all five massage techniques that we utilized earlier. So you're gonna get, yes, gliding friction, but it may not be as stimulative, right? The goal is not to pump up the body. The goal is really to relax. So you might see a lot more effleurage. You might see more targeted uh, deep friction. It really just depends on that specific therapist and what their goals are. But I guess generally speaking, the goal is to have that athlete recover quicker and get back to feeling normal sooner. Maintenance massage can look different depending on the needs of the athlete, but I think a real good way to just kind of think about it in your head is going to be it's just like car maintenance, right? This is getting your oil changed, your windshield wipers done, right? Making sure fluids are in tip top shape, right? This is just the things you need to do in order to operate normally and efficiently. And that's exactly what a maintenance massage is meant to do. Rehabilitation massage, on the other hand, while still individualized for that specific athlete, is gonna typically be far more targeted, right? The goal here is to help them recover from some kind of injury. But on top of that, you also want to prevent re-injury or some other kind of complication from that injury, right? Because the body will compensate, for instance. So if you're, you know, taking, if you have a knee injury and you're putting less weight on that leg, you might be compromising other areas of the body, meaning they're tighter, this, that, or the other. So this is where the skill of the therapist really comes in to play because they have to kind of figure out what is needed and where to help recover from the injury, but also prevent re-injury and other extenuating injuries. So with all that out of the way, what can an athlete realistically expect when it comes to an increase in their performance? Sports massage works. If it didn't work, you wouldn't see it being performed on professional athletes that are paid hundreds of thousands to millions of dollars every single year. But we need to reel in our expectations around what boosting performance means because if you're expecting an athlete to add four inches to their vertical simply by getting some topotment on their calves, you're gonna be sorely disappointed. Sports massage as a whole has been shown to improve circulation, promote relaxation, increase flexibility, and even decrease delayed onset muscle soreness, although that decrease is extremely minor. But it's important to understand that these benefits may not be beneficial to every athlete in every situation. For example, an increase in flexibility for a power lifter may not be the best thing, or at least in a pre-event situation. An increase in flexibility and range of motion can come at the cost of stability meaning massage techniques meant to relax could potentially be dangerous for a power lifter. For a gymnast though, an increase in flexibility and range of motion could be exactly what they need for a specific event. The same goes for a hurdler, martial artist, diver, so on and so forth. This is where the expertise and experience of the athletic trainer, physiotherapist, or massage therapist becomes essential. It's important to understand that this increase in flexibility and decrease in delayed onset muscle soreness though is really only statistically significant. And that doesn't necessarily mean it's a lot, right? All it really means is that the data that we've accumulated and the science has been done has shown that yes, right? Sports massage does increase flexibility. It makes you feel less sore. How much though? Not very much. Now here's the thing, that doesn't mean that that's always the case though with every single athlete, right? For some people, it may feel like it does a lot more than it does for others. 
especially because like when you include the psychology of this, right? Athletes may just be like, I need this, right? I need my stinky socks. I need to wear the same underwear if I'm Patrick Mahomes and I need my massage. And you can't say that it didn't help them. It's just saying that the data we have suggests that yes, this moves the needle. Sports massage moves the needle and does show an increase in flexibility and a decrease in muscle soreness. How much though, that's really tough to say. The benefits of sports massage are best seen when you pair it with other treatments and training methods. It can be a powerful tool for the right person in the right circumstance, but that doesn't make it the best tool in all situations. Knowing when, where, and how to perform the technique is more important than the ability to perform the technique. So knowing this, I wanna give you something to work with, or probably more so experiment with if you're someone who's looking to boost your performance with your own home workouts. What I wanna do is discuss some pre-event sports massage techniques and see which of them are gonna be beneficial and which of them are gonna be detrimental for three of the most common sports out there, weightlifting, CrossFit, and running. Generally speaking for CrossFit, the aim is to prepare the body for a variety of high intensity functional movements by attempting to enhance overall muscle function, flexibility, and readiness without compromising stability. Full body, moderate pressure effleurage with targeted petrissage in the upper and lower limbs with cross fiber friction, again, in targeted regions of muscle tightness is believed to be beneficial. Pair that with dynamic stretching, which will help tonify the muscles after the massage and the body should be primed and ready to go, at least from a sports massage perspective. But deep tissue techniques, along with static stretching and intense myofascial focus can be problematic. We did an entire video on foam rolling and myofascial therapies already, so if you're interested to know more, I encourage you to check that out after this video. But just understand that deep, slow, intense pressure on the soft tissues right before a circuit or activity might possibly increase the likelihood of an injury. Another thing to be wary of is overworking an area that you're trying to target when it comes to regional muscle soreness. Look, I get it, right? Like massaging an area when it's tight can feel really good, but the problem you have when it comes to CrossFit is you're risking imbalance because let's say it's too relaxed, or if your goal is to tonify, it's more toned than the other side. And obviously that's gonna be a problem when it comes to CrossFit because balance is essential. But the other thing you have to worry about is possibly injuring yourself, right? Overworking the tissue. I mean, you're just mashing stuff together. It's definitely possible to create inflammation and that inflammation could lead to an injury, but the definition of inflammation essentially comes with a loss of functionality, which again, defeats the entire purpose of the, I guess, pre-event massage. Let's now shift to running. Now, generally speaking, the aim should be to prepare the body for endurance, consistent pacing, and repetitive impact of running. The focus should be on enhancing lower body muscle function, maintaining optimal muscle tension, and ensuring good circulation. Mild to moderate full body effleurage is a great place to start. Now from there, you can then move to gentle petrissage with a greater focus on the lower body. I mean, obviously in running, the upper body is still gonna be involved, so feel free to address the upper body. But again, from a performance standpoint, you're primarily gonna be focused on the lower body. But the thing is, you don't wanna overwork the muscle tissue either. So when we say gentle and light pressure, this is mainly just to increase circulation. It's not there to like, you know, really pump everything up. You just wanna kinda like, hey, we're getting ready, let's do this. As with CrossFit, dynamic stretching is a great way to finish this off. It allows the muscles to tonify according to natural movements, and it recruits the nervous system in practical ways. But just as we saw with CrossFit, Deep tissue techniques along with static stretching are seen to be a massive problem even when it comes to even a light jog. When it comes to weightlifting, there's obviously gonna be a lot of nuance here, but the general aim should be to prepare the muscles for lifting by enhancing muscle activation and maintaining optimal muscle stiffness rather than significantly increasing flexibility. So generally speaking, you're gonna be focusing these techniques on the regions and areas that you're about to lift with. So what you'll wanna do is a light to moderate effleurage. You could do some gentle petrissage. You can do some compressions where you're just pushing the tissues together, feels really good. And then you could also do some, sh some short vibration, right? That stimulating vibration to help tonify the muscles right before you lift. 
What you don't want to do, or what you're, it's believed you don't want to do, is going to be like deep tissue massage. You don't want to do like excessive friction around the joints because those are going to promote relaxation as well as flexibility and just an increase in range of motion. And for weightlifting, I mean, that, this could potentially be destabilizing, so you could potentially be setting yourself up for injury or at least reduce your ability to perform. So again, everything we just discussed is super generalized. There is a ton of nuance with it, and there's a lot of skill that goes into this at the highest of levels with these physiotherapists, massage therapists, and athletic trainers. But even still, what's nice about this is these techniques, you know, at its core are not that hard to do, which is nice for your average person who's just looking to, you know, maybe try something out to see if it helps them with their performance. But if you're really, truly looking to maximize your performance, that's where you have to start incorporating other things with it, right? It's all the stuff you've heard before. So, right, better sleep, better nutrition, no alcohol, and, Honestly, it would be recruiting a sports massage therapist to help you out with this. Now, obviously scheduling this though can be a logistical and financial nightmare for a lot of people. Even if you have access to a sports massage therapist or just a massage therapist at your local gym, you know, are you able to schedule and you know, a pre and post event around every single one of your workouts? Probably not. I mean, if so, that's awesome. Go for it, see how that works out for you. But for most people, this is just not in the realm of reality which is why I'm really excited about the fact that it's so simple to do, at least, I mean, again, this is not at the high end, right? You're not gonna get all of the potential benefits. There is a philosophy, there's a lot of nuance with this, but this still is something you can experiment with, or right? you could test this at home, you can try these things out, see how it works. At worst, it feels good, but at best, it may help. Thanks for hanging out with me. I hope you enjoy the video. I'll see you in the next one.